Hello, and welcome to the Data Planet How To Training Module. I am Paul Byrne, Research Data Services Librarian at Syracuse University Libraries. What we will cover in this training module are finding data in Data Planet, selecting variables and adding data to the chart, different types of charts you can use and create in Data Planet, and finally, exporting your data from Data Planet to another program. Let's take a look. When you first come into Data Planet, this is the screen that you'll see. Over here on the left, you can choose the variables that you are interested in. Across the top, you can make selections within those variables. In this case, you can choose what year or month, state, etc that you want. And then of course in the main portion of the screen is where you can plot your various types of charts and maps. If you scroll down here you will see a description of the data that is being displayed and it's very important to read this so you know exactly what is included. Also they have a suggested citation you always need to cite the data and or charts you get from Data Planet or any other source. You can search for data in a couple of ways. One is by browsing over here on the left where we have some often requested variables, some key economic indicators. You can also browse by subject. This data is based mostly on the United States, but I would like to point out that there is an international group, and that's where you can find data from the China Data Center, the IMF, OECD, World Bank, etc. You can also browse by source if you know the agency producing the data. They also have what are called overlays, and these are things that you can use to add to your charts to show when there was a recession or when a Democrat or Republic uh, was in control of the White House or the Senate, etc. The other way to find data is to come up here to the top and use the search box. You can search across all the categories or within individual categories. Of course, searching all categories is the broadest and you can enter your search term in here. As you type, you can see that it gives you suggestions. You can search for the word murder in the variable description or just across all fields. We'll go across all fields. And here are your results. You get the title, a brief description of the particular variable, if this is the one that you want, you just need to click on the title and will bring you right to that variable displayed in the appropriate graph. You can see how it has drilled down through the browse section for you. You can select in this particular variable the years, the state, the county, and the law agency which is the particular police department um, reporting that information. It's important to remember that not every variable is reported in the same manner. So let's come over here and click on confirmed crime rate instead. Now you can see how the the options up here have changed. You can still have state and county but we no longer have the individual reporting agency. This is very common. Things like this can happen with just about any kind of data from any source and is simply something you need to be aware of. You can see right now that we are showing just one county from one state. You can also add another state or another county by holding down the control key if you're on a PC or the command key if you are on a Mac and clicking on another county or whatever selection you like. You can see that the chart changes as you make your new selections. 
you can also include more than one variable from the left here. So let's go over to education and then public elementary and dropout rate and let's add the dropout rate to our chart. Again hold down the control or command key and click on that particular variable. And You see how the chart has changed considerably. Again this is because as you see there is no longer any county level data because the dropout rate is not reported at the county level, only the state. Let's talk about the different kinds of charts that you can make. First let's click on show chart options. And you can see the different kinds of line or area or bar charts that you can make. You can come over here and click on map to make a map. You can see your chart options change. You can make a pie chart or a ranking chart. Let's go back to our trend line and we'll hide the chart options. Over here is something called show data and we'll click on that. You can see it does exactly that. It shows you the data that are being used or displayed in the chart. Sometimes this is useful if the chart looks a little weird you can look at the data to see that maybe certain things are not being reported for certain time periods or geographies etc. And again you can add, we'll add a little more data to this. And you can see this section gets a little busy when you start adding more and more data. Most likely what you want to do once you've made all your selections is to export the data to Excel. So you can just come over here to export and see all of your different export options. Of course there's Excel. You can send all of this that you see in the bottom portion of your screen including the descriptions to a PDF file you can produce delimited text. This is a CSV file. Uh, this isn't very useful because it displays it in the web page rather than an actual file. Uh, if you know how to use SAS you can export it directly to SAS. If a program you use likes XML you have XML. If we were displaying a map down here then this shapefile option would be available and you can use a shapefile in a program like ArcGIS. Finally the RefWorks direct export is just the citation. This does not export the data as well. So let's go back up to Excel and click on that so you can see. We'll just open the file and there are all your data selections. At this point you can create new columns, you can create whatever charts, etc. that you like. Save the file and you have all your work right there. One last thing is this calculator icon over here on the right. This is so you can create new columns directly within Data Planet. I don't really recommend doing this because once you quit out of Data Planet, everything disappears. There is no way to save your work within Data Planet itself. That's why I always recommend downloading the data to Excel and creating any new columns you want in Excel. That way you can save the file and you have saved all of your work. And that, in a nutshell, is a brief introduction to using Data Planet. Thank you. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Our contact information can be found on the webpage.